We are going to, to see our first protocol. So it's a very, very simple protocol, but it's still used in a lot of situations when you don't have a lot of delay between the sender and the receiver. It's something that works well and is very easy to implement. So we are going to, to see this protocol, send and wait. So what does it mean, send and wait? It means that you are going to send an information and wait for the acknowledgement. So, we can try to describe the algorithm of this, uh, this protocol. So, the sender waits for data from upper layers. Okay, so there is a... So here we, we are at one layer. So what this does it mean? Wait for data from the upper layer. It means that we expect a data request coming from an upper layer. So here, <laughs> when you read data request, you may think, I request data. And that's not what it means. Data request means I request this layer to send this data to the other end. Okay? So, when we have this data request, so here we wait, we have the data request. So what do we do? We compute the CRC, or we send the information, and by sending the information, we <coughs> compute the CRC, and we send the CRC at the end of the sequence. And we wait for an acknowledgement. But we may have trouble. For example, we have a transmission error here. And if we have a transmission error here, the CRC will be wrong, and the frame will be discarded. So for the receiver, it will be like receiving nothing. So what do we do to protect from this? We trigger a timer. And if we don't receive acknowledgement <coughs> during uh, this period of time, then we will resend the information. OK, so that's what it says here. Step 3, we compute the CRC. Step 4, we send data and trigger a timer. If we receive an hack, remove data from memory, because we know that the other one has received information. And we go back to step one, where we are waiting for other information coming from the or data request coming from the upper layer. And if we don't receive acknowledgement, then the timer will be expired. And if the timer expires, then we'll send the data again, and we trigger again the timer at the right step. So that's one thing. And the other part is the receiver. So you see that the algorithm is quite different. What will do the receiver is to wait for PDU containing data. And if the CRC is OK, then you send a data indication to the upper layer, and you answer that, you answer on the network by sending an acknowledgement PD. And if the CRC is wrong, you do nothing. It's like, so if the CRC is correct, you do that. If the CRC is wrong, you discard the information, so you don't care about this information, and it's like you had received nothing. OK? So, so it's what I said before. We don't lose frame. Frame doesn't disappear from the link. But we consider that the frame is lost because the CRC is not correct and you discard. We discard voluntarily the information. 
And what we are going to do here, you see that it's the opposite of what we have done with the omelette protocol, is that here we are going to acknowledge all the threads. When it's go wrong, okay, we say ack. If it go wrong, we don't say anything because we discard the information. Okay, so we don't take the same approach because we saw that the, the other approach was totally wrong because if I'm losing all the information, I don't know that the other one didn't receive it. So the other one doesn't see any prime. So here, we acknowledge we have pretty positive acknowledgement. It means that we send the information when it is, uh, we send acknowledgement when what we receive is correct. Okay? So, what do we have? Uh, this. So, here, it's what we have when we send the information. So, from the point of view of the sender, we send the information, we start a timer that will expire in the future, but we receive an acknowledgement frame, so we do not, we stop the timer and we remove the information from memory. Okay? So here, we have data request, for example, here we have a transmission error. So the CRC is wrong, so the frame is rejected by the receiver. So the sender will never receive any acknowledgement. And when the timer expires, then we send again the data frame. And here we have a data indication. So it works on any, every case? No, every case is? Error yes, for small error. Okay. But here our protocol is correct. Yes, that's here. I suppose that, of course, here I have uh, maybe I don't put it, but here, of course, I have another ac an acknowledgement frame, and this acknowledgement frame stops the timer. But here you see, for example, I have errors on data frame, <coughs> but I can also have errors on acknowledgement frames. So what happens if I have error in acknowledgement frame? I send my frame, so it's okay. So the data view is okay. So here I send an indication to the upper layer. I send an hack, and here I have an error. So what will do the receiver of my hack? It will discard the information. <coughs> so the CRC and the hack frame is wrong. So it's like receiving nothing. So from the sender, this is the same situation as I'm sending something. There is a transmission error on the data frame, so I receive nothing. The receiver, the sender, <laughs> sorry, cannot make cannot make the difference between these two situations. For him, is I send something, I don't receive acknowledgement. We cannot say we have received something here. The CRC is wrong, but the size of the frame looks like a an acknowledgement, so we can consider, no. The CRC is wrong, you discard it, so it's like you receive nothing. So what does it mean here? It means that in that case, you will receive, you will send again <coughs> data. Like in that situation, and here it's good to send again data, because data has not been received by the receiver. And so here you will have receiver will send to the upper layer a data indication. So here, what will happen? If I look at the algorithm I 
I described earlier. Here, weight for frame from physical layer. Validate CRC. CRC is correct. So what do I do? Oh, I send here. Data indication. To the upper layer. So here I take 20 euro from my only ATM, and I have 40 euros withdraw from my account. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a good protocol? So here we have a problem. How we can save, sell, uh, solve this? Sorry? Yes. So here we have the problem. So what we can do is, for example, to number frames. So here I'm sending data frame zero. So I'm sending here. I have an error. So I don't take into ac uh, into account the frame. Uh, the acknowledgement, sorry. So I resend frame zero here. But, and the receiver already received frame zero. So what do we do? He can say, okay, I have frame zero, so I don't care. I forget about it. But if it does that, the receiver sender will never get an acknowledgement. So here we will send an acknowledgement. We say, okay, I have received again. We don't say again, but I have received the frame. We are stupid. We say, I have received a frame because it's correct. The CRC is good. But here, I don't send the data indication to the upper layer. So it means that the entities that is here, that is using my network, will not see that we have trouble and we have resend the network. Uh, they will there resend the information. And the next time I have to process a data request, so here I change the number and I put one. So I can make the distinction between these two cases. These two cases, because here it was zero, and here it's one. So it's not, we don't resend again. Maybe, for example, you have another error on the acknowledgement. And for the third time, you send the frame. But here is not the case because the number has changed. So since the number has changed, it's a new thing. So here I can send a data indication to the upper layer. OK? So this way, I solve the problem by adding a counter on the frame. to make a distinction between retransmission and new frame. So, is it correct? It is not correct. But here it's a very tricky case. So suppose that, in fact, there is something that is very difficult to estimate when you design a network, is the value of the timer. Because here it's very simple. I have only one link, and I have uh, constant propagation delay. But suppose that here I have a computer and my computer is doing plenty of things. So it means that, for example, it's not, it will not answer immediately after receiving the frame, but maybe after f three or four milliseconds. And maybe it will, be a, it will add a delay. And I may 
the acknowledgement may arrive after the timer expires. So sometimes it can happen. And so in, in that case, so this is a case here where the timer is too small compared to the time it takes, run trip time, so what we call the run trip time, so the time to send a packet and receive the acknowledgement. So here it's not a good situation, but it should, it should work. Even if it's not optimal, we must have something that works. And here it doesn't work. Because you see, here I am sending frame zero. And here I am to uh, in, uh, the timer expire. So I am sending again frame zero. But, and then I receive the acknowledgement here. So what do I say? I say, okay. I'm sending again frame zero, and I receive the acknowledgement for frame zero. So now, I can send frame one. And here, we have a transition error on frame one. Okay? But, uh, here, frame, I have resend here frame zero. So here, I got an acknowledgement. Okay? And here I mistake and I say, okay, I've sent data one, and I receive an acknowledgement. So that's the acknowledgement of this frame. So frame <coughs> one has been received correctly by the receiver. So now I can send frame two. So frame one is this, this part. So frame one will never be received by the upper layer. And can the, can the acknowledgement mm -hmm. message be also have a counter of which frame? Yes. So that's why it's missing in <coughs> this protocol. Is that here there is a confusion between the acknowledgement that doesn't carry a number and the data frame that carry a number. So the way to solve this is to add a counter in the acknowledgement, and here, for example, I will receive acknowledgement zero. I'm sending frame one, I'm <coughs> receiving acknowledgement zero. So it's not possible. It's not important from frame one, it's from frame zero. So here, I don't receive acknowledgement for frame one, so I will resend frame one. And this way it will work, even if my timer are not well dimensioned. Okay? So, we have the protocol. So now what we are going to do is two things. First is to tell me what will be the size of this counter, or the minimal size we need for this counter. And then, you see, I, I wrote something here, but we see that it was not complete. So what you will have to do is to describe the new protocol we have defined. So here, for example, you see I, I number a bit, 0, 1, 2, etc. I number frame, sorry, 0, 1, 2. But you know that everything is finite in computer science. So here, if I'm taking, for example, uh, uh, 8 bits, then I can go up to uh, 255. So is it do we need one byte, or do we need two bytes, more or less, to make this protocol work? In that example, for example, do we need two? If I was using, for example, one bit, here we have frame zero, then frame one, then frame zero, frame one, etc., etc. So if, do we, if I'm using zero here, so I'm using one bit, to number frames, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1. Do I have a problem of ambiguity here and creating some uh, strong feature where I am losing one frame 
like this uh, very strange uh, uh, example where I'm losing frame one because I mistake frame one acknowledge zero and acknowledge one. It's what you say. Well, I, I, uh, I didn't say that, but I think it's a correct assumption because I'm doing send and wait. So I'm sending and waiting. So maybe what can happen is that I'm sending, I'm waiting not enough, so I'm sending again. But I cannot send more than this. So here I will have confusion because in frame number here, you see it's because here I confuse the acknowledgement. So here, for example, if I have acknowledgement one, in fact, I cannot receive acknowledgement one from a previous frame because the previous one was zero and uh, it was okay for this one. So in fact, here, my counter can be only on one bit and this bit will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And I don't create any confusion. Of course, I can have something bigger. But the minimum size is 1 bit. OK. So here, the answer. So now I want to listen to you who wants to give a description of the end, the end protocol. The correction, I was too lazy to do it. <laughs> and I said that it was too complex to describe it with words. Because here, in fact, you don't write really a description. You put a pseudo code or a pseudo algorithm with words. But the problem is that if I give you this thing, you will not be able to write a code that will interact with another implementer. Because here it's not well defined. So we are going to, to stop here. <laughs>